say thank you this morning for Intato you have led us. We started our 30 days of fasting and praying on the second of this month. Today is the 29th day of the program. I want to thank you because your grace has helped us. Your grace has sustained us. Your Holy Spirit has empowered us. We have not done this by our power alone. Because a natural man understands all the things of God. The Bible says he cannot know them because they are spiritually discerned. Thank you because the Holy Spirit has been the source of our strength. That none of us has to last on the way. Thank you for the very many prayers. We have lifted up to you in every branch of government all over the world this month. We know our prayers are not in vain. As we have called upon you, O oh God, we believe that things are full of blessings for any miracles upon our lives. We can see the clouds of the blessings. We worship you for everything you have done and for what you are doing and for what you still do between now and tomorrow. When we are going to pray the prayer to a close, thank you, Holy Spirit. We worship your name. Lord, as I come before you this morning, I commit myself and the very many hearers within this church and online unto you. That may your Holy Spirit take control of it. May you help us in the service of today. May you minister to God from heaven above. May your Holy Spirit be the minister of the world. May He use me as a vessel. May you give your people, oh God, understanding spirit and hearing ears. That this one shall bless us. Even as we lift up our voices continue in prayer. Lord, our prayers will never be denied answers. Thank you because you are God and thank you. We appreciate you. We are not as we call upon you today. Great things are happening in our lives. We shall see signs and wonders. And glorious things shall happen in our families. In our situations, in our circumstances, in our business, in our spiritual life, in the spirit, spirit as a whole, we shall see your fingers at work. Thank you, the Spirit of God. Because what we are about to do are unprecedented. We give you all the glory. We exalt it. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we are praying. Amen. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we are praying. Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. You are not clapping for your pastor. You are not clapping for your uncle. You are not clapping for your sister. You are not clapping for your sibling. You are clapping for the king of kings and the Lord of us. It is not at all. Let us make the exalted. God bless you. You may be seated in this presence. We want to appreciate God and give him the glory that is due only to him. That in every branch of government, globally, through the leadership of our general overseer, Pastor Dr. Elijah, Oludele Abina, uh, we normally start every new year with 30 days of fasting and prayer. If there's anything I am grateful to the leadership of this journey for, is this good heritage they have given to us. It's a wonderful experience to start the year with God in prayer. And I told you not to, that when you give the first to God, the rest is preserved. The first of the year, the first month of the year is gathering. So when you give the first to God, February to December will be divinely preserved for you. That's exactly what we do in government every year. I want to thank God for that. Uh, by the grace of God, today is the 29th day of our fasting and praying. The 29th day of our fasting and praying. You will remember that we started on the 2nd of January and today is the 30th day of January 2022. And uh, the focus we are given today is divine visitation for glorious turnaround. Please close your um, please close your close your prayer bullet. Don't use it because the topic I'm giving you is not the one we are having your bullet. I've made some amendments. If they say we should pray for Nigeria, we are praying for okay. Kenya. We are praying for the entire African continent. So that one shall not be confused. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I think uh, 
success can help us display this is the topic we are working on is the same but slightly different. Is glory. Can we see it? Can we see the topic? Yes. Can we see the topic? Yes. Ah, am I might come to my place, but can we see the topic? Yes. I'm not trying to have on the street in the house. Can you see the topic? Yes. Yes, how is it? Divine visitation for glorious turnaround of all our ugly situations in Nigeria, Kenya, and other. Africa nations. How many today? Divine visitation for glorious turn around of all our ugly situations in Nigeria, Kenya, and other African nations. Let's pray God's word before we proceed. The book of the Lamentation chapter 5. The book of Lamentation chapter 5, I will read from verse 1 to 2. Lamentation chapter 5, from verse 1 to 2. Remember, O Lord, what is come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our houses to aliens. That is descriptive of what our experiences are in many African countries. But before we go ahead this morning, I want to sing a song of prophecy. The song is very prophetic and very powerful. I want to stand up and sing with me. Yes, I don't know whether Africa can help us to display the song. Africa. Is for Jesus. Africa is for God. I will sing, I will dance. Satan is confused. Africa is for the King of Kings who oh, praise his holy name. Are we there? Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Africa is for Jesus. Africa is for God. Africa is for Jesus, Africa is for God. I will sing, I will die, Satan is confused. I will die for the King of Kings, oh, friend, he's only there. Hallelujah, Africa is for Jesus, amen. Africa is for God. Africa is for Jesus. Africa is for God. I will sing, I will die. Satan is confused. Africa is for the King of Kings. Oh, bring his own in vain. You are saying that we are not Africans. Jesus, 
the right benefits from these mineral resources because of mismanagement, because of corruption, because of greed, because of lack of vision and poor leadership. These are the main of our continent. Mismanagement of our profitable resources, corruption in the highest place, greed, lack of vision, and poor leadership. These abundant resources are a curse rather than a blessing to us. This is seen in so many African countries where we give ourselves, where we make ourselves in the name of seeking control of our own people resources. There are some African countries to get to. You see, some people don't have one hand. Some people have half their two legs. Why? Because they are fighting for their own. Because they are fighting for control of resources. We have made ourselves, we have killed ourselves. Many times have been lost. What God designed to be a blessing has eventually come to be a curse. But from today, I see God changing that trend in the mighty name of Jesus. I see, I see God changing that trend in the name of Jesus. Please, today is a day of prophecy. What to prophesy on this continent? If it is good for the African continent, it will be good for you. If the African continent is able to be resuscitated by God from this the deluge of poverty, from the corruption that we are going through, I pray that when God changes the destiny of Africa, it will impact one way or the other on your destiny also. So today, let's hold hands. Let's see ourselves holding the map of African continent together and we are lifting up the continent. From where the devil has shattered and destroyed it, we want to lift it up to God. Who can repair whatever the enemy has done? And I see new days happening on the horizon of our continent today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. More than 50% this is, more than 50% of African population live on less than $1.25 a day. You know what is $1.25? I don't know how many of you are Kenyans. Now, what is that in Kenya series? What is one dollar in Kenya shillings? One dollar in Kenya shillings. Huh? Huh? Can you imagine a whole human being who has wife and children living on less than less than hundred bob, less less than one hundred and twenty per day? You are living on it as a man. We are some people are making no less than fifty million per day, twenty million per day. It's a whole countries, but most African countries. Many more than 50% of our population live on less than $1.25. No wonder they look at us and they call us in that continent. But God is changing our destiny. I say God is changing our destiny. The monetary gains we make from our non human resources are embezzled by a few people. Did you hear me? It's just like adding 1 million people in the country, for instance. And only 10 out of the 1 million people are the ones that are enjoying the resources that God has given and blessed the 1 million people with. That is exactly the scenario that is happening in the African continent. Only few people are enjoying the benefit. The investment, the gains that we make, they siphon our resources and the profit from the money. And all the financial allocations by government in different countries and very few people decided to take them abroad. When you get to many of the advanced countries, they do a cry. That in their banks, we have billions, we have trillions of Kenyan shillings of Naira that are stuck in their bank. It is Africans that have taken our money to those places. You know what? If I when I was preparing this message, Holy Spirit began to minister to me. That the people who steal these resources, they have decided to take it to from a continent where the money is most needed to a continent where it is least needed. It's like our situation in Africa can be graphically, I mean, they say, I mean, looked at as somebody having a cup of water. And another person is having a drop of water. And you are taking out of your cup of water to go and have to drop of water. It doesn't make a difference to you, but yet you have been properly chosen. That's what we need, God's very leaders in Africa. And you can be one of them. I said you can be one of them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Did you hear what I said? These people in our countries, they don't need our money. But yet, we took our money from 
for our poor continent where it is most needed. And we took it to them where it is least needed. We can be looked at as somebody who has a cup of water. And you are asking for your cup of water to somebody who has a drum of water. That's pathetic. That is what most of our political leaders are doing. If I don't know anything happening in Kenya, I know of Nigeria. Many of our leaders are thinking I'm going abroad. When uh, our former head of state, what is his name? General Sangi Abaja, when he died, the money that man stole, somebody told us, if they go to every city and every country and they begin to give forward media to each household, they said the money will still not finish. I asked myself, look at me. Everything God gives me like the essence is what is to be able to feed whatever you eat here. Because they are 20 so much. Even years after you have died, they are still trying to get the money from those countries and the banks where the money is stored. That is idiocy and what and stupidity. But from today, I see God raising my job in our nation in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. We are seeing situations whereby some of our leaders are in a I know who can that you are you are very you are you are saints, you are intelligent. But if I don't I know, you may be feeling yourself. There are situations where people took money. They are stuck in the bank and they don't have any attempt for them to take more to the bank. It will raise a lot of alarm. They now dug the ground and they were keeping the money there. They dug other ground in the house and they kept the money there. So, the organization of Bullock of David, they went and bought some cars and they put them inside the bush and they put money inside and they loaded it. What a stupidity. These are kind of leaders that were celebrating in Africa. And you know, real life is about what you can do for others, not what you can do for yourself. Most politicians are very selfish. Most leaders in Africa are very selfish. When it is time for election, they become our friends. After the election, you don't hear from anything. Let me tell you. If I want to shake the hand of Raina and Rutuna, I can shake it fast. If I don't want to go to the hand, I can break the hand. And I say, Tosha Baba or Tosha Rutu. They say, Come on, man. You are from Nigeria, yes, they will shake my hand. The moment they are small thing, I cannot see their shadow. That is exactly what is happening in most African countries. Our political leaders, our state masters, they are taking us captive. In Africa, we have poor infrastructure. Please listen. We have poor infrastructure. We have high cost of living. All of us are living in Kenya. Am I right? The vegetable buy, you don't have to talk about so many things. The vegetable buy, we used to buy for around 1,000 grade. A few months ago, it is now 2,000 months. I don't know why. We can't kill ourselves. We only reduce the quantity that we use in the house. This one, the book from Paris is going on it. That one should, it shall not flow again. So, if you can use a pump to cook your food, use two spoons of vegetable oil. If vegetable oil does not even have time to do really head wine, so it's like every man has also. So, I try to spiritualize it and make myself happy. <laughs> so, what is the point? Hallelujah. Then, someone say, God have mercy. Yes, I'm going to say God have mercy. You know what some of these politicians are doing? You ask yourself, why is the demand, the inflation going up our worst way when it is time for campaign? That means they want to make some money from the poor areas in order to get money to campaign. And the problem is what the moment the price go up now, it can have a come down again. We need God in Africa. As it is happening in Kenya, so also it is happening in Nigeria. May God have mercy upon us. May God have mercy upon us. Yeah. Poor people are struggling. I am not familiar. Many people, many of us are struggling to pay our house rent. Am I right? Yeah. We are struggling to pay our house rent. I know there are so many households now. They are even thinking, instead of getting a delivery room flat, let them go to one bedroom. It is not because the delivery room is not convenient, but they are thinking about their pocket. Some are even thinking of 
building the house, no room, where you are living, to go to the house of iron sheets to go and land it. Man was free. You know, in the Nigeria, there is a proverb. They said, when you are crying, you should not be ashamed. And you are ashamed, your crying has to be that you don't want to die. All of these are happening in our society. That's how we need to go today. We have political instability in Southern African countries. We have kidnapping, as it's happening in Kenya, so it's going to happen in Nigeria, and it's happening in Southern African countries. About two or three years ago, there was an attack by four uh, European countries that terrorized these terrorists. They want to strike in Kenya in some places. That's why they want us in the question we use. They have told us everyone should be very, very vigilant. But I pray, God will frustrate your agenda in the mighty name of Jesus. Every terrorist, we are remembering your agenda today. I stand upon the authority in the name of Jesus. They are cancelled over the nation of Kenya as he was frustrated upon this altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Ah. Kenya shall not be blown up. I say Kenya shall not be blown up. There shall be peace in this land in the mighty name of Jesus. Kenya shall not be reset in the mighty name of Jesus. As many who are gathering to as many who are gathering to grow up Kenya, they will grow themselves up in the mighty name of Jesus. I said, I'll grow themselves up in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Our economies in most African countries are import driven. What do I call it? Our economies are what? Import driven. We import almost everything. <laughs> we import things like tomato paste. Where are the farmers of Kenya? You see tomato. Wasting on the Holy Spirit. Yes. Do you want to tell me that there are more Kenyans who are taking it along to pull them, to cry them and play them and pull them inside containers for all of the use? Yes, we say what? If you go to any supermarket and the target is what? Even if there are tomato paste that are made by Kenya, Kenya will not buy them. They say it can be poisonous. I'm not saying I'm not When you go to, you know, Sometimes when I go to my school, I see the show I'm getting. The moment I go there and I see men in Nigeria or men, I'm not sure whether I can spend too much. So I look for the only ones. It will be expensive, I don't know why. It's a tragedy. But we don't even trust us. We don't trust our people. Therefore, we invest in the economy and we make a poverty our own. We import almost everything. Toothpaste. Women, they bought two pigs. Two dollars. When you go to Spanaget, the two pigs you see, you know, we believe that our own can cut very easily. When you do that, you see your pigs. But the important one, you put it there where you say the thing can see, the man can use it for money to eat. We bought almost everything. That's not how I can record this thing. We call you, we bought rice. Many of us are eating one rice. You don't believe. In your own people, and there are many rice farmers in Africa, but we don't believe in them because our government will not support the farmers. We import maize, we even import vegetable oil. Most of the vegetable oil we, we use in our houses, they are the ones that are imported. We import condiments and sauces, we import processed vegetables, we import dairy products like meat. The meat you drink a lot, most of them are imported. God have mercy. That's all I say, God have mercy. We both prepare food. There are food that are prepared in the US that we are eating in Kenya here. They put inside, inside what? Inside can. And they put, you know the number of seeds they are going to cross before they get here. And we are waiting for them to cook in their kitchen so that I can eat in Kenya here. Let somebody say God have mercy. Let somebody say God have mercy. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. We both are the only place. Even though it will kill us, we are waiting for the own so that we can import it. We import fish products. That is what they call Geisha. I don't know what they call it. Geisha, sardines. You don't have to tell you. Ah, they will, they will package uh, fish inside one can. And they will travel all the way from the West and Britain and China. And they will bring it there. Even in Kenya today, you have more of, you have more fish brought from from what? From China, that the fish brought from Lake Victoria. Let's have a single of this. We import almost everything ginger, cocoa butter, everything that we're using. For decades, successive governments in Africa have been promising us that they're going to change the situation. 
election. There was a man who was afraid in Nigeria at the time. In the last election, the one that was done in 2000, was not this one. That was the one that they did about four years ago. So they were interviewing on the TV that uh, you have been promising that you want to be the president of Nigeria. He said, Yes. He said, I will take this. Ah, they said, You sound so optimistic. He said, Yes. You don't know. He said, I will take this. He said, People who promise the man, they need to how will you do it? I want to take this. The man said, You sound so optimistic. How will you do it? He said, Just wait. He said, As I'm talking now, Nigeria is changing already. Have you ever been here? So your country has started changing things. People are not leaving. Politicians, they are, you know, the greatest attribute of a politician is deception. He said, as he's talking, he said, they are changing. The, the act was started doing like this. You mean they are changing? He said, yes. As I'm talking, now they are changing. Thank God you are in the mood of a campaign in Kenya. You don't want to listen to lies. Switch on your TV. There are so many people who but they are not committed to do That's the kind of leadership we have in Africa. But from now it is changing in the mighty name of Jesus. I say it is changing in the name of Jesus. So today we need to cry out to God in desperation that God will turn around our situation. Because when we have good leadership, it can bring positive impact on our economy and our society at large. Today we should lift up our voices to God. That he will show us mercy. We need to cry out to God according to Lamentation chapter 2, verse 19. That arise, cry out in the night. At the beginning of the watches, pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift your hands to one day for the life of the young children. We faint from hunger and the head of every spirit. We need to call upon God today. But quickly, there is something I want to do now before we pray. How to turn around the situation of our continent in Africa? How to, how to make sure one day they will go and pray? How to turn around? It is not just praying. After praying, we will do the right thing. How to turn around the situation of our continent? Number one, love and pray regularly for your nation and continent. Learn I love and pray regularly for your nation and continent. It is our God-given responsibility as believers to pray for our countries and to pray for our continent. The prayer of the saints are mighty to do great things through God. Our prayers can turn the situation of Africa around. We are saying people like the Bible. We are saying people like the Bible. We are saying people like the Bible. We are saying people like 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 Elijah in the Bible. It was prayers they pray that turn around the situation of their country. If we can pray today, our God is not partial. He will turn around the situation of African country in the mighty name of Jesus. If you read Psalm 122 verse 6, Psalm 122 verse 6, the Bible says, "Pray for the peace of Jerusalem." They shall prosper that love thee. Can we say it together? Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Where is our Jerusalem? As far as Kenya is concerned, Kenya is primarily our Jerusalem. But secondly, when you look at it continentally, Africa is our Jerusalem. As we pray today, God can talk situations around. In the mighty name of Jesus. As seen in the nation of Israel and Judah, prayer can turn around ugly situation. Prayer can bring a lot of stability. And to prove to you that we have our God given responsibility to pray for Kenya. Brothers and sisters, we are now in a generally period or season. We need to pray for Kenya. You need to pray for Nigeria. We need to pray for our continent. Except God intervene in our situation. Let me tell you, this may get worse than the one in 2007, 2008. Let somebody say God for me. Let somebody say God for me. Because prayer and God divine intervention. Prayer does what? It does not divine intervention. 
direction. It may not entertain in the situation of our country. If you read First Timothy chapter 2, from verse 1 to 3, First Timothy chapter 2, from verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, I love it. Let me read from me. I exhort therefore that first of all, first Timothy 2, 1 to 3. I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may live a quiet and peaceable life in godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. What is good and acceptable in the sight of God? Pray for our country's leadership. Pray for the leadership in African continent. The Bible says it is good in the sight of God. That means we cannot live a peaceable life until God has raised God's very leaders for us in Africa. Quickly, number two. Join those who do the right things. Join those who do the right things. Number one is to pray. We should love our heart of our continent and pray for it. Number two, we should join those who do the right things. A nation cannot go wrong when people do the right things. Say a nation. A nation cannot go wrong. When people do the right things, I need to talk today. A nation cannot go wrong when people do the right things. One of the biggest problems in Africa, listen to me, is that we know the right thing, but we are doing the wrong things. I want to hear. I want to hear. We know the right things to do, but yet we intentionally do the wrong things. That's the major problem I see in many African countries. It is sad and ironical to know that whenever our African people travel abroad, they obey the rules. They do what? Are we together? When they go abroad, they do what? When they see the traffic light, they obey. They don't need to be police. But when they come back to Africa, they do like right and right. When they come to Africa, they don't need to be police. What do they do? They speed up. <laughs> when we come to Africa, what do we do? We return back to our Africanness. But God is taking our Africanness from today. And the right thing about Jesus. I'm not a camera abroad anymore. You are a camera abroad. So you are abroad is nine only. From today, God is opening the door for you. Supernaturally. I know there are some of you have been thinking of traveling outside of your country, but you have been very poor. But from today, God will do it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Each of us can make a difference in our own little ways by doing the right things. Say after it. Each of us. Hey, each of us can make a difference. In our own little ways, by doing the right things. How? Listen to me. These things, they are the problems of Africa. Number one, don't throw or don't practice on the road. Did you hear what I said? Don't do one. You know that I said I'm going inside the water too. After taking suit of water, I don't drop inside my hand. I don't start my project. I don't want to drop it inside my house. You may think of what is happening to us. You get the size of people sometimes. What we see inside, it seems as if all the people inside are animals. But because we have been used to wrong things, we no longer see them as their own thing. We take this little man to talk to people and talk to him. Some people will finish eating shit off, they will paste it on the leg. It's animalistic. What does it mean? Because what do you call it? People that uh, they are 
pass the money for them. And they say, they will not make any money. They know, they know, the Lord said the light is out, that we should wait. He said, ah, but the other will just pass. Hey, you know, 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 You don't lose anything by your very rules. Even God himself gave us rules. Even if there is no car, wait for your time. We travel abroad. When there is no car, most of the time you look around there, there are no people there. But yet you see people waiting. Even if it's still they wait. When the guy says, you cannot move, you see them move. But the moment we travel back and we arrive at Munitana Mohammed Airport, you arrive at don't go get Yana. He said, How do you get Yana come? You start disobeying the rules again. What is happening to us? Are we obeying the rules there, but when we get to our heart, we say, Please, sit down, where anything goes. As believers, if you don't even obey traffic rules, you may be committing sin against God. The Bible says, Obey the most important thing. They put us in when you obey. Every sin is sin before God. Is that because of that? I will pray for you. No, you are not making Christ. You just accept everybody is making the road. I say that I want to see God. I say that I want to be naked so that I can join it. Oh, not join it. What's to win? That's why we're believers. Believers are rule keepers. Believers are what? Are rule keepers. Don't do it. Then I don't need to go. It's animalistic. Sometimes I see an adult. He just gets in front of the church. He never heard of our church yet. Sometimes I'm going, people, they are going here last week. They will not school this day. I tell them, I have to be prepared. Do you have a toilet for God's sake? And we have public toilet, don't tell you this. He has a public toilet, but he doesn't want to be so special for that. Because you are used to the wrong thing. You don't see the wrong thing and drop here. You can't see a white man do that. Even his press will look for a place to ask somebody, can I do some weapons? But I'm not going here. Even there are avenues for you to go and say, somebody's not going to do this thing the proper way. He said, it's Africa. To do it here, please, I don't know what if I said, let me do it here. Don't delegate the bush. Don't delegate what? In the bush. You see some people as they are going. They don't look like this. One day I was passing, I saw one assignment and I ran there. I got. And the man that I was doing it again, I walked up to the house, I didn't see it. They were there, they were there, they were there, they were there, they were there. Behind the judge, eh? To be an American is not foolishness. God created us as intelligent people. Let's go back to where God created us to be. When you see gutters or the waterways that the provider comes by God, don't call it his day. It is the wrong thing to do. That's why our rules don't trust. When you see a scripture on the wall that says, Post no be, it means don't paste anything on that wall. Do not make that even talk to pastors. It is when we see post no be without paying services. This is very public and very public. Am I still your pastor? Am I going to have to make it after this service? When you get to a public place, we have to have a and you see people in front of you, don't talk to you. Some of you call yourself Christian. Somebody is not paying it already. What are you doing here? Well, you present as a Christian here. You will stretch it in this. That's why I was deciding it's something like this. We are playing our political leaders. It's not with us. Everybody says it's not with us. No! They don't have mercy upon us. Treat other people with respect. Treat them the way you like to be treated. Don't be involved in corrupt practices. Don't steal. Don't get sent to the office. In fact, I know this is Africa. Many of us see them as just one of those things. 
We are not to tell you it's a crime, it's for countries to be late to the office. He said, My God does not command you. Does he tell you to do the wrong thing? He said, Punctuality is the soul of every business. Don't lie. Don't lie to your boss. Don't lie to your wife. It makes a difference in our society. Don't mess up the space. Don't disab- disobey the traffic rules. If you want to know what doing the right things can do in a country, go to this other one-term country, Rwanda. If you want to know what doing the right thing means in a country, here's a country that was shattered by a war a few years ago. The whole country was smelling. Bones all over the place. And come of a human being all over the place. But a president came into power and put rules into place. And everybody decided to kill the rules. One of the neatest African countries today is Rwanda. You know, a minister of God was invited from Africa, from Nigeria to come and minister with yeah. in Rwanda. I mean, the host who was inviting him told him, he said, my friend, when you come to my country, if you can see a piece of paper on the road, I will give you one million. Did you hear what I'm saying? I was sitting there. If you can see what? A piece of paper on the road, I'll do more with The man started celebrating. He told his wife, please prepare to be cooking food for me. I said, I'm a already in the middle. Is that because of our country in Nigeria? Nigeria is very good, but see the man on the boy is not as it is not my case. So when he got there, the man like it. He started looking for people. He really started looking for Jesus. He started looking for people to make one million. He was also looking for Jesus for one million. And then he started looking for one million. He spent many days there. He never found a piece of paper on the road. In discouragement, he called his wife. He said, Honey, you have lost the one million. Imagine somebody saying, Come to Kenya. If you find a piece of paper, in the time the video I will give you, you will make figures within five seconds. Why? People are committed to do the right thing, but here you are committed to do the wrong thing. And that is typical of what happens in many African countries doing the wrong thing. From today, please, it is good for us to pray, but join a group of people that do the right thing. It will make a difference. Is that what that do now? It makes a difference from those people who are practicing the water where you are, and the light will spread over. The Bible says, He are the light of the world. Shine the light where you are. When Pastor Jesus says, Shine the light, the people that shine the light, I shine my light. People for sharing the light, by the time the light comes on, our society is completely affected. The Lord help us in light of Jesus. Number three, preach God's word to your body. Preach God's word to your body. The more we preach God's word genuinely, the more righteous our nation will become. I'm not talking about preaching about uh, bank and preaching about money, prosperity. No, preaching, let people see. What is means to live a righteous life before God? Tell them about the different things that can make in their life. Preach about heaven. Preach about hell. Preach about righteousness to them. And when people are changed, what happens? The, the nation of life will change. Number four, what do you want to preach? Number four, vote people of integrity into elected positions. Vote what? I want to read number four because they came down and going to the election and the sharing season. Let's go about what we Can you say it again? It is almost said that we decide the kind of leaders that we vote in leadership. You can't vote the wrong people into leadership as a player to get to decide the kind of leader that you have. If they allow ourselves to be pride before we elect people into elected offices, and when they don't fulfill their election promises, and we are not claiming them, let me tell you, you are not doing the right thing. Your election is the power to put the right leadership into position of authority. Your election is your power. Don't say it. I don't do an election like this. People will come to you to, to bribe you. I said, please, can you vote for me? I'll give you. Maybe they start shooting money, they start bringing them. The kind of generosity that has not been generous for the past one year, they will not be generous. They bring back of 
Christ. Don't collect it. If they see this book about two months ago, three years ago, they are not this book about the next year, about 60 days ahead. Don't collect from their time to pray, pray, and God. Don't be involved in it. Because when you do that, you are selling your conscience as a child of God. Don't be involved in such. There is no one who has been said, if I don't collect it, does it make a difference? Yes, it makes a difference. People are doing that, people are watching you, let go. Don't sell your power to put right leadership. It's authority. One of the greatest problems of Africa is what? Wrong leadership. Wrong leadership. We vote for the wrong people. Let me tell you, everyone votes in a country. What did I say? Either you vote or you don't vote, everyone votes. Your refusal to vote is indirectly voting the wrong people to power. I don't know whether I'm going to have to your decision not to vote is indirectly allowing others to determine the next leadership on your behalf. Your votes are powerful. And I believe that as I do the vote in the year 2022 in Kenya, God will give us the right leadership. I say God will give us the right leadership in the right name of Jesus. The right leadership as MPs, as president, as you know, senators, people that will do the right thing. May God give them to us in the mighty name of Jesus. What are the prayers that I want to pray next? Every one leader, may God replace them supernaturally in the mighty name of Jesus. We have a role to play by putting the right people into position of authority. Let's start up on prayer. Let's start up on prayer. Yeah, don't just hold the one in your hand. That's a very confusing. Don't lose the one in your hand. Yes. Number one, how many is it? Ah, read it as if I am not a fast and prayer. I can't hear you well. I'm only here to arrive at Pastor Chico Z. I don't even know that you can be the best, you know. Now let me hear this book. I do. Yes, yeah, I do read it. Don't, don't talk. Yes. Lord, if I have told you that the loudest you read it, the more the millions I will give to each of you on this side. You are blessed like that. You read it now as if Jesus is blessing. Yes. Let's hear the dynamic people of God, the Gideons of Jesus. Can you read that? Lord, may you not judge us like, may you have mercy upon our continent, in 
the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Are you praying at all? These prayers are very powerful. Very powerful. Number two. Who 
Dubai. They go to the US. They are visiting these places. When they offer home, you will expect that they will come and replicate the good thing that is for them. When they offer their common sense to those people, they will replicate the good thing that is for them. Let's pray that it opens their eyes. They are, are emotionally and psychologically blind. We need to let them know how to the eyes and lead them to do the right thing for them. In the right name of Jesus. Let's pray for that. We pray for our children. In the right name of Jesus. In the right name of Who is the leader? 
Ah, who is the leader? The father is something else. That family can never experience peace. Am I right? Yes. But the father is godly. The family will experience peace. That's exactly what happens in the nation. But I don't complain. God will put them in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, this one I want to make prophetic declaration. You have to say this for three times. You have not prayed with us. Now say it. You shall declare it in and it shall establish. So you want to make a pronouncement. Yes. Can we pronounce? You have to say three times. Yes. African countries, the workers of the. Sorry. The, is it the
We get the thick line to go and remove all of that in. So they have removed most of, most of the structure. And because they are the way they are doing it, that's how it is for us. The path to do to do good. The strength to do good. What would you do to us in Africa? I said, what would you do to us in Africa? In the right people. Number 14, we are going to say this last one too. Africa, arise and shine. Take your rightful position in the world in Jesus' name. Say it again. Africa, arise and shine. Take your rightful place in the world in Jesus' name. When it's time, Africa, arise and shine. Take your rightful position in the world in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said, I always hear God say very much Jesus. That's what God prophetic proclamation. Then, I don't have to all aspiring looters, kidnappers, insulted, petroleum and pack line vandalizers receive divine visitation and transformation in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, all aspiring looters, kidnappers, insulted, petroleum and pack line vandalizers receive divine visitation and transformation in Jesus' name. But that time, all Esquire looters, kidnappers, insurgents, petroleum and pipeline fertilizers receive divine inspiration and transformation in Jesus' name. Amen. God will transform them. God is not interested in the death of this man. God will change them. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said Jesus' name. Now, I want to go back to, we have uh, just two more prayer points now. Two more prayer points. Like that. Yes, let's see number 16. Yes. I would say special ministration for the day. Uh-huh. As defined by the pastor. Now you read the prayer point now. Yes. Everything in my destiny causing pain and agony. Remove them today and transform my destiny as we did with Jabez. I will not live and die as a shadow of my own destiny. Father, I give you up myself, O Lord. 
Hey, very much, Jesus. As we remember that, we start to remember me. Hey, the mighty people, Jesus. Everything in my life has tested it. That is causing pain. That is causing agony in my life. May you remove that today. Hey, the mighty people, Jesus. Uproot everything that is making me to be a shadow of myself in my ministry. That uproot them. Hey, the mighty people, Jesus. Every situation in my life, my family, that is causing us pain, Daddy. May you remove those all. In my immediate family, in my second family, everything causing pain over my children. Oh my God, Lord, remove them, oh God. Thank you very much, Jesus. Let me take cause of pain in my ministry of prayer. May you remove them, Daddy. In the mighty name of Jesus, arise in your power, God. Remove everything, oh God. Lord, and transform my life. Transform my destiny. As you give down a new destiny, give me a brand new destiny. Transform my life. Transform my destiny. Thank you very much, Jesus. Lay your hand upon God. And right now, God, for fulfillment of my destiny. I will not pray and live as a shadow of myself. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sure, take me to be at the beginning. Before my father, before my father, my mother, met each other, before my brother could see me in the womb, thou shalt take me to be. I shall be it. I shall be it. Very, very much in love. I'll fulfill my destiny. I'll not live and die as a shadow of myself. Very, very much in love. I will live and fulfill destiny. I will live my fulfilled destiny. I will live my fulfilled destiny. In the light of the Lord Jesus, so shall you die. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Yes, Number 17, that's the last prayer point. I am a blessed child. 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 I am a bl